So how do national crises affect communities differently? Well, oftentimes uh, when we think about a crisis, there's a sense that it's almost by definition unpredictable. It could be a hurricane, such as Katrina in New Orleans. It could be an economic crisis, like the Great Recession that, that has hit us. What tends to happen is that communities that were vulnerable before the crisis tend to pay a significant price, more so than communities that were well resourced. So even though the crisis was a shock that comes from outside the system or outside the city, again using New Orleans as an example, uh, what we see are profound local differences in how the response to the crisis is played out. What that tells us is that larger social phenomenon, the national economy, um, heat wave in, in Chicago is a good example. There's been research done that I refer to in the book on how um, death by heat, which one would think is, well, perhaps you know, driven by biological conditions, again, is heavily influenced by social characteristics. And in certain neighborhoods, we see much higher death rates in that case primarily because in some neighborhoods people were fearful about going out into the streets, therefore stayed inside, and, and in turn um, led to a higher risk of death. That's a way in which social structure, in, in a sense, explains and mediates these larger uh, patterns. This goes to my point that while globalization, international patterns are crucial to understand, they do not negate the importance of the local. People are negotiating everyday life in particular places and we need to understand that. It's really a matter of integrating what sociologists would call the micro or individual level uh, behavior, individual level perceptions with the more meso or macro level of the economy of the nation state. And what I do in my book is to try to really drill down and understand the social organization, the social mechanisms around neighborhoods and communities and go beyond the usual suspects. There's been a lot of research on factors like poverty and race. These are important. But I also look at factors that are harder to measure but that are crucially important to how people perceive life and they are, according to the data, important in terms of predicting certain kinds of outcomes. Perceptions of disorder, collective action, the sense in which people trust one another and are willing to work together for a common problem. That helps explain, for example, the response uh, to a crisis, the organizations in a neighborhood. These are all things that are not defined simply by economic status or racial composition.